I've got to say it's going very well. Um, the investment community overseas as well as local is very positive about South Africa. Of course, in so saying, I'm not saying that people are blind to some of the issues that we've got, but the general goodwill definitely does point to us being able to successfully raise $100 billion. And uh, you say that you have managed to secure some $35 billion in support already. Uh, can you tell me about that? Where is it coming from? What, what does support mean? Well, to, so far we've gotten pledges from the uh, UAE, um, we've gotten pledges from Saudi Arabia, and pledges from China, and these are various projects, but primarily government to government, but to a large extent we do expect that they will also involve the private sector. And in, in, in what sectors specifically, where is the interest from the investors abroad that you're talking about? Um, to, let's say, 20 billion of that, or rather 25 billion of that is really around the energy sector. Uh, ESCOM is a beneficiary of part of the money that was pledged by China. Um, the money that came from Saudi Arabia was also energy based. And then the money that has come from the UAE or Abu Dhabi to be specific is for various projects. And uh, you say that the president is ideally wanting half of that $100 billion to come from local investors here in South Africa. But of course, we do know that local investment in South Africa has been on ice because of a whole host of issues. You say that, quoting yourself, it's not a pipeline dream that it can come from local investors half the amount. Some say, given the economic statistics of where local investment lies, it is a pipeline dream. You know, you can always take the view that a glass is half empty or half full. And if we look at South Africa and what it has done historically, um, I can say that this is not a pipe dream. Do I believe that South African companies have previously and can invest $10 billion? The answer is certainly yes. Do we have the kind of corporates that have that financial way with all? Do we have the sophistication and a diversified market? The answer is yes. But what we also need to remember as South Africans is that no one underwrites your future. And to some of the comments that were made, it is important for us to also stand up and say, as South African business, we believe in our country and we will be investing. But was making that plea to um, the private sector equally, government has got to say, local and international business and investors, this is what we will be doing to ensure that the environment continues and is very conducive. Can you just invite us into the conversations with private business specifically and just uh, reveal to us what are some of the concerns that they are raising in your conversations with them and what is government doing to, to address them? Well, some of the concerns that have been raised, I must say, are the ones that we know. Um, so I will just speak to a few. The issue around governance, um, which has been addressed with some of the appointments at the SOE levels, but we need to do a lot more. The concerns around uh, corruption levels, but importantly, the consequences of corruption. We do have the Zondo Commission underway. There was the VBS uh, Bank, which was uh, reported on. So I've got to say, when it comes to corruption and also governance, there are concrete things that we have seen in the recent past, which we will continue to see, which address those issues. The issue about policy uncertainty, particularly the mining sector, it's taken us a lot of time to get to a point where we're releasing spectrum. So, you know, those are the issues that people will raise. Also, the change of policies within a sh very short period of time. Issues around industrial uh, relations, because you can't have a conducive environment where the key stakeholders, business, government, and labor, are not working at either. So, I would say there are no new issues that have been raised. And of course, with the land debate being a very important debate within South Africa, that is something that we have been talking to a lot of recently. And have, has any business people spoken to you recently about issues of changes in, 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 in ministers, especially key ministers, your economic cluster now, we have a new finance minister, generally well received by the market. We did see the RAND reacting positively, but have they raised a concern about the possibility of this being a norm that obviously we did carry from the previous administration? Well, I think the change in the Ministry of Finance was brought about by exceptional reasons. Um, so 
I haven't, um, to this extent, heard anyone raise any issues with it. And fundamentally as well, it is about the person that the president has appointed to the role, someone who's well known, um, who has been minister, who was a, a reserve bank governor, and someone who's very au fait, not only with South Africa's monetary policies, but importantly, South Africa's economic policies and health. And here uh, at the KZN uh, Investment uh, Summit, you saying uh, you are a homegirl of the province yourself. What are your um, expectations and also what are you seeing on the ground in terms of business from KZN and its contribution to the economy? Well, we've had a few engagements with uh, members of business in KZN. I must say the approach that they took was there's no point in casting blame. We must all work together as a collective. It was very refreshing. I think the one thing that is uh, not as known is that KZN has got substantial industries. I think there is need for uh, business people in KZN to profile themselves, not only to internationals, but also other South African investors. And I've got to say, drawing a leap from the, N of the MEC speech, there is definite uh, direction from government that uh, we will support. And the call for the private sector to partner with the provincial government is a very welcome one. And finally, the investment summit most people are looking forward to at the end of the month. What can we expect? Well, firstly, we're very excited. Um, it is the first of such being hosted by the president. And certainly, I must say, I believe we will hear a lot of announcements around some policy issues. But pertinently, we'll get to see a bit more around what South Africa has got to offer from an opportunities perspective. So I think South Africans will be very proud to know that ours is an economy that has the ability to grow and equally, we are focusing on the economy because in its absence, it is very unlikely that we'll achieve our objectives of ensuring that we overcome our triple challenges.